Brown County State Park is known for a lot more than the pretty fall foliage that we have that people come from all over the place to see. It's Indiana's largest state park, and it's a wealth of rolling hills and steep ravines and lakes and rivers and, and all kinds of plant and animal life. Today's BioBlitz is all about trying to identify and catalog the variety of those plants and animals. And that's what we're here for today is to talk to some of the people involved with walking those hills and wading those creeks and looking up in the trees for the birds uh, and trying to find out what's living here at Brown County State Park. Jim, tell me just a little bit about two years ago uh, when you first started thinking about uh, cataloging more species in the park and how do we come up with this bio blitz? Yeah. Well, the term bio blitz means kind of a, a timed event and to get it done almost in a competitive way. We, we never really considered it being a competition between our taxa teams. We had a big chunk of landscape. We, we barely knew what was here. I mean, we know the basics. We know the fundamental components of these forest ecosystems, but there's so much more to know, as you know. So we wanted to really delve into the science side of things, Troy, get the specialists to help us. We've solicited help from the Indiana Academy of Science and the nearby universities, our DNR biologists and specialists. So we wanted to bring them on board and basically have them help us uh, learn what's here. Okay. And, and, and when we learn what's here, then we can be better managers. I mean, because you, you can stand at the Nature Center and say, oh, there's a red bud, there's a tulip popper, there, there's a, a cardinal and a tufted titmouse, and, but you just can't see it all from the window of the Nature Center. Well, you have to get out. It's a, it's, it's a big property. We won't get it assessed or inventoried in this year and last year and the 10 more years to follow. It'll, it's a big endeavor. Um, we know that from the get-go, and, and as we accumulate the data, and we assess it and we know, for example, where rare things are, we pinpoint that and then we create overlays on our resource management map so that certain soils determine certain plant communities which bring in the rare reptile. We, we know a little bit more about where they're located. Okay. So we don't go willy-nilly into the forest with a new trail or a new building which could occur. So the more we know, the better it is that we can say yes, this unique plant community would most likely produce this or no, now we know for sure it will. And the more we know, like I said, the better managers we are. And it's not like you waited till the bio blitz to start identifying the plants and animals that are here. You've got decades of, yeah. uh, of uh, experience of people cataloging. I mean, the park opened in 1929 and people have been noting the changes in the, the plant and animal communities ever since then. True. We've got watch lists and checklists and suspicion lists of uh, things that might be here. It's never been confirmed, so now we have a chance to delve into those more remote backcountry areas. This is a rugged land, as you know, that makes up our park. We have places that we haven't even ventured into yet. Hmm. It's that remote and that and that wild. Um, so, so over time, the plan is to send some of these taxa teams into those back boony okay. back country areas and get them to uh, spend some time in there. Um, uh, we want to make them comfortable while they're here, of course, and provide food and snacks and refreshments, but keep them on the property as long as we can where we can benefit from their expertise. The, uh, we won't go into it in great deal, but the, the deer herd is under control, kind of, from, from when I was working for the DNR, and we had that very first uh, uh, population control hunt. Yep. yep. Um, have we seen plant species returning yes. since then? Yes. I'm happy to say, and you were here when you saw that that oversized herd. I'm happy to say they're under control and keeping more with their plant resource that they use as food. Um, that creates a healthy forest mm -hmm. as those plants then are allowed to grow, exploit the many habitats. When there's less plants eaten back by more deer, you have less diversity and a less healthy stand of trees, no question. Right. You keep deer numbers in check, the chief herbivore on these plants. Uh, they grow. Uh, you're most likely then with a healthy uh, canopy and a healthy understory, you're more likely to encourage a healthy herbal layer and floor sure. where all these plants will arise. Um, those people that were here in the 80s remark 
more than anyone. My goodness, look at all the lush undergrowth. There's no browse line visible anymore. That's what we are after, not so much just to create more hunting opportunities, but to keep the deer herds under control with what the food source would supply. And when we did that, then the variety and diversity of herb herbaceous species came back. Brittany, tell me about the Bio Blitz. I understand that you were involved in getting it started. Was that just here at Brown County or, or where? Yes, it was. Uh, we decided in order to do you know, proper resource management of our park, we need some control data. You know, what's here in the okay. park? Okay. Uh, it is such a large park, almost 16,000 acres. And we actually have the park sort of sectioned off into areas anyways. Okay. Uh, we have 10 areas sectioned off okay. that we use for our deer management in the park. And, so and that's, a, that's a long story oh in itself. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> we're over that. We're still continuing that. Uh, but we have these areas in which we just thought it would be so nice to know more about the natural communities in the okay. park. You know, do we have any small prairie areas? Of course, this isn't a prairie area. Uh, but we do have some sections of prairie specimens, different plants. Uh, we also have some wetland areas. We have upland dry forests. This okay. is a hilly area very rugged and so we're just curious what species live here. Do we have any marshes? I mean if you think of the big hills of Brown County, do we have low yeah. wet areas too? We do. This We have lots of large ravines. We have a lot of upland wood areas filled with you know oak trees, hickory okay. trees, uh, but we have some moist areas with sycamore and beech and you know, it's really a diverse area. Well, this weekend I'm working with the reptile and amphibian crew, uh, but I like to help with all the crews. Uh, for birds, they've already found 82 bird species, okay. and they'll go out tonight and probably get all the nocturnal owls right. and whippoorwill and maybe a chuckwill's widow. And So we're finding a lot. We're very fortunate to have the insect specialist, I mm, believe. Okay. You know, as we just learned, there are so many species of insects, and to have the scientists. And they're all interrelated. We talked about the pileated woodpecker feeding exactly. on the, the, the wood ants mm -hmm. and, and each community and each species affects another. And our black rat snake here, he, he, he's intertwined with everything as, as well. Yeah. We have so much and we're fortunate to have so many researchers coming out. We have all different taxa, so a taxa would be uh, for example, reptiles is one taxon, okay. birds is one, plants is one. Right now we have two botanists out in the field including my husband Tom Swinford is out botanizing while I'm snake hunting. <laughs> so we love to come down for this. Are, are you using volunteers at all or are these all volunteer professionals? Um, we do have some volunteers. It's a, a, you know, a citizen science project. Okay. Uh, so we bring in the experts to be the taxa leader. So okay. they're in charge and they go through a DNR Division of Fish and Wildlife right. to get a collecting permit. Uh, so everything's permitted. And then we have people sign up to be on their team and go out with them. Now, how many teams do we have this year? I believe we have eight teams. Okay. So we've got some fungi people and <laughs> some fish and some, you know, we've got everything. It's kind of like there's, there's somebody collecting everything. Yeah. Uh, there's people that have an interest in all the different areas of the natural world. Definitely. And because we're doing this community mapping thing, uh, we hope that each team leader goes out with their GPS unit, okay. and when they find something of interest, they will mark the coordinates and bring it back to BioBlitz headquarters, and we go ahead and do a GIS. BioBlitz headquarters. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's it makes science fun. All natural beef, pork, and poultry raised right here in Southern Indiana. Preferred Meats of Sellersburg is a full-service butcher shop providing quality meat products with no chemical preservatives or growth hormones. Our family-owned business raises and buys all of our products locally. We offer a full range of natural aged beef, gourmet burgers, homemade sausage, and a full line of Boar's Head Deli products. Located in the hometown plaza at the corner of Charleston Road and State Road 60. High Tech Firearms and Training is your southern Indiana source for all of your hunting and shooting supplies and firearms. We have a fully stocked selection of handguns, rifles, shotguns, knives, ammunition, bows, and archery supplies. Firearm training and personal protection classes are offered by NRA certified instructors in our in-house training center. Remember, shoot often and carry safely. High Tech Firearms and Training is conveniently located in Sellersburg, Indiana.